We are here in Malta with my friend uh, Ben Gertzel. Ben, we've known each other for more than 10 years, yeah, maybe 15. Yeah. Yeah. Originally, we were both in the leadership of uh, what at the time was uh, the World Transhumanist Association, then renamed uh, in uh, Humanity Plus. As I just learned, you are the chairman still. And then uh, we organized together uh, a few artificial general intelligence uh, conferences like in Lugano, uh, Switzerland. And uh, of course, uh, we've kept in touch, but uh, recently you did a big uh, leap uh, with uh, Singularity Net. Mm -hmm. So tell me about what Singularity Net is and what you are aiming with, to achieve with it. Sure, it's a pleasure to be talking to you about this one more time. And you know, our ideas and passions and interests and visions haven't changed that much in the, in the 12, 13 years since we first met. But step by step, things are getting realized, which is pretty, pretty amazing to see the changes in, in this period of time that, that make it you know, easier to bring these, these things into practice. So I've been working on AI with an orientation toward artificial general intelligence for you know, more than 30 years now, which is astounding to realize. And you know, back in the 1990s, I got my PhD in the 80s, but back in the, in the 90s, it became apparent to me with the rise of the internet that a decentralized infrastructure would be probably the best way to you know, explode benevolent AGI you know, upon the computing and communication networks of the world. You know, I had a book published in 2001, Creating Internet Intelligence, which was largely in this vein. How do you make a decentralized network of servers all around the globe with no centralized control hub coordinate together to lead to general intelligence? And my wife, who I met merely 10 years ago, she dug up a web page I'd made in 1995, which was saying how I was going to run for president of the US once I turned 35 on the decentralization party platform, right? So the idea of decentralization as a major force for, you know, social and, and political and economic good and as the best way to make a, a platform for general intelligence, it's not a new idea, but once the Ethereum <clears throat> blockchain came out and the notion of a, of a smart contract, which is not necessarily either smart nor a contract, but it, you know, it's a, it's a persistent, secure transactional script. Once this notion was out there, it became clear not only could you make things like scriptable monetary systems and decentralized autonomous organizations, but you could really use Ethereum or other platforms like that as the basis for the number of us had been scheming a long time, which is a, a decentralized computing and communication fabric serving as the basis for a sort of digital biological AI organism that spans the globe, ingests data, provides AI services to individuals and companies that need it, and in which the AI nodes making, making up that whole population communicate with each other, share information and, and, and learn from each other. And when Ethereum came out, I saw like this is, is a step on the path. And my friends at the Global Brain Institute at the Free University of, of Brussels, I mean, we, we looked at how we could build a global brain infrastructure using Ethereum blockchain. But, you know, I was really busy with my work on the OpenCog general intelligence architecture and with Hanson Robots and, and Sophia and getting more of our AI behind my good friend David Hansen's robot. So I didn't act on my on my insight that you could use these new blockchain tools and smart contract to create a decentralized framework for general intelligence until, you know, May or so 2017, I met Simone Giacomelli, a young blockchain entrepreneur and, and developer. I explained to him my vision and he saw right away like, wow, we can, we can actually do this. The time is perfect and we co-founded Singularity Net, myself, Simone, and David Hansen, who saw immediately that this blockchain-based framework could be used to infuse his, his robots with a higher level of intelligence. And, you know, we did our initial token generation event and a public token sale December of 2017. And since then, I've been in team building and engineering mode, right? So we've, we've built an amazing AI and platform development team all around the world, spanning you know, St. Petersburg, Novosibirsk, Bangalore, Belo Horizonte, Bologna, Addis Ababa, Hong Kong, where our head office is and where I'm based, Shenzhen. And we've been building the Singularity Net platform, which is a platform that anyone can use to put their AI agents online, have them talk to other AI agents and participate in the decentralized 
control network where all the AIs fuse their intelligence together by <coughs> exchanging data and messages to lead to some intelligence in which the, the whole is, is greater than greater than the part. So we're, you know, we're launching our platform early next year, sometime in, in February of 2019, perhaps even, even around the end of January. So we're on the verge of launching the beta platform and we're also creating a division of SingularityNet for product development and infrastructure development. So we can go beyond just the platform tools and our AI algorithms and create end user products serving users in vertical markets and, and, and creating infrastructure underlying the platform to allow scalable operation of the platform on anyone's server farm. So we're, yeah, we're really in like full speed ahead, build the infrastructure for the super intelligent singularity mode. And I think 2019 and 2020 are gonna be astoundingly exciting because the platform and the AI tools we've been building all year, building on all the decades of development we've done before, these are going to be launched into the world and then it becomes community building, right? How do you get more and more young people and, and old people and all people around the world to contribute AIs to this network in a way that lets the AIs talk to other AIs? And how do you get businesses across the spectrum of vertical markets to use this crazy decentralized digital biological organism to supply the business that they run with with the AI, AI wizardry and I, I think you know from a general intelligence view this sort of decentralized fabric is the best way to allow AGI to crystallize from a combination of you know general intelligence oriented components like our open cog cognitive architecture more simpler pattern recognition oriented components like, like deep neural networks working on vision and auditory data and whatever other AI people put in there. Then from a political point of view, you know, this sort of decentralized AI infrastructure, this is the way to stop AI from being owned by a handful of big tech companies and, and, and a few large military industrial complexes, right? Because how, 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 how else can you do that? It was always a question that we would look at the potential of, of, of AI but for literally decades, uh, we didn't have the uh, powerful hardware, the smart algorithms, but also the data that was needed in order to deliver on the promise of what we really wanted to do. You, yeah. And uh, uh, now uh, we are uh, there. Uh, not a lot of people realize that uh, uh, in your pockets, with your smartphones, you now have AI today, thanks to Apple, thanks to Google, uh, one of the fundamental challenges of AI in the 60s and the 80s would be image recognition. And now you can find a, a photo out of hundreds of thousands that you store in the cloud based on its content, searching through uh, hundreds or thousands of different keywords that you didn't use the label, the, the, the photos themselves. Now, Ben, uh, I have the speaking cap, I think, that is, that is the speaking hat. This focuses cosmic energies from the future into your brain. Oh, I feel... The singularity sends messages back into the hat and programs your brain about how to create the singularity. So you're you're now part of the closed causal time loop. Right? All right, all right. I, I make it possible. I, I, I make it possible. Yeah. This is the moment that we choose what future the universe uh, will live in and, moment, and, right? and, and, and let's uh, choose wisely. You mentioned um, AI agents uh, and you used a wonderful uh, marketing gimmick to draw attention to Singularity Net, which is Sophia. Sh Sophia drank too much yesterday and, and, and she couldn't join us in this, uh, in this interview. Uh, she's hungover a little bit. But uh, Sophia is also a provocation. She's the embodiment of things that a lot of people cannot even imagine unless they see them. And, and, and you, Sophia, to have people think about what is possible. Your turn. Yeah, the, the Sophia robot serves a couple of different roles for our project. And one of them is, of course, she's, she's a symbol of the general intelligence that, that, that we're creating, right? Because a decentralized blockchain-based infrastructure in which intelligence can self-organize from a combination of generalization oriented components and narrow AI components. Th this is a bit much for like uh, the average gas station attendant in New Jersey to understand. On the other hand, if you put 
you know, a beautiful humanoid robot that looks you in the eyes, smiles, and answers your questions in front of any human being. Somehow they get like, wow, you know, this is a machine that has key aspects of the human. Hey, maybe I'm a machine of, of, of a different type. Maybe different types of, you know, digital and biological machines can bond together just like this bond I feel with this robot in front of me, right? And I mean, this, this is a really powerful tool for symbolizing the deeper and more abstract aspects of what we're doing. But the Hanson robots, Sophia and others, are also fantastic research platforms. So I mean, we're, we're using them in our AI lab in, in Hong Kong to experiment with integrating machine perception, linguistic communication, you know, vision, hearing, and understanding of, of mo movement in the in the environment and the ability to inter interact with people in an, in an adaptive and inference driven way so that there's really two purposes to the robots one is for outreach and one is as a research platform but i think the deeper value of these robots is yet to come because when we're going to create super intelligent ais you know we face the question of what is the orientation of these super intelligent ais i mean what goals are they pursuing what understanding do they have of, of, of value of which outcomes are positive or or negative or more or less desirable and if we want to get the crux of human values into our AI systems. How do we do that? You can't type in a list of human values. Like, you know, don't kill your neighbor unless they try to kill you first. Don't sleep with your neighbor's wife and unless she's really good looking and he's not looking or whatever are the exact rules of human life. I mean, that doesn't work, right? I mean, science fiction has shown that doesn't work in many cases. That's the whole premise of, of Asimov's I, I Robot stories. On the other hand, how do you teach your, your human children human values? Well, you you enter into them in shared situations. You're experiencing situations with them together. You're showing them how you act and how you interpret various situations. And by empathizing with you and going along with you, they get a sense of what values you're bringing to bear on interpreting with other people and, and acting in, in these situations, right? And so we need to do that with AIs. So what's the best way to explore shared values with an AI in a real world human situation? Well, if you have an AI that has a human embodiment that can look you in the eye, that can go through everyday human situations with you and experience them with you in, in a shared empathetic way, I mean, that's a perfect way to, to transmit your human values in, in, into the robot. And I think David Hansen has seen that from the beginning. I mean, as a huge fan of the science fiction writer Philip K. Dick, which I am also, and that's one of the things that drew me and David together, Philip K. Dick always emphasized two things. Like, reality is not very well understood. It may have quite different properties than, than, than what we think, and as, as we understand more and learn more, we may learn reality is utterly different than what we think it is. But regardless of what weird perceived or simulated realities you're going through, compassion is really important. Like love for other beings, deep understanding of other beings, spreading joy and diminishing suffering among other beings. And, and this is really what David Hansen had in mind in creating Sophia and his other humanoid robots is, you know, we're going to discover all sorts of new things about ourselves and the world as, as, as we grow and as we create super intelligence and go through the technological singularity. But if we can infuse the technologies that we build including ai and all the other technologies around that with basic values of love and compassion then the odds of this singularity coming out well are going to be certainly higher than in the alternative case and this is why he wanted to make a robot that will look you in the eye and that will smile that will nod nod when you nod and that will be able to you know, enter into human situations in a, in a human-like way. We are here in Malta, uh, and uh, I met uh, uh, Silvio Scambri, the junior minister for finance, who was uh, part of the team that designed their blockchain regulations. And uh, surprisingly to me, he said that not only they are not done, but they are already working on what their next project is, which is actually concerning AI, the Malta AI task force right. that you are also part of. What are the goals of this task force? Yeah, so this was actually the main reason I diverted from my already insanely busy schedule to come to this event in, in Malta, not just to participate in another really cool blockchain event and ha hang out with, with visionaries such as David Orban, but as well, the Maltese government is seriously looking to follow up with what they've done in blockchain, where they've transformed themselves into the, the blockchain island. They're looking to follow that up with a major AI initiative and turn themselves into the 
AI island as well and become a top international hub for artificial intelligence. And I, I think they've invited me to participate in their AI task force and shaping their policy and initiatives for AI education and AI in industry, and as well working toward an AI citizenship test. So our our Sophia robot was made a citizen of Saudi Arabia, which is interesting, but of course Saudi Arabia doesn't have really a modern rule of law based government system. So there's a more interesting question in the government that's based on rule of law and modern democracy. What does it mean for a robot an AI, you know, a decentralized autonomous organization, a digitally defined company. What does it mean for an entity like this to be a citizen or to qualify for citizenship? And so what we're doing with the, the Malta AI Task Force is basically convening, you know, an international committee of experts and going through a formal process with the government to define a series of milestones and a series of tests by which an artificial entity could gradually move towards stages toward, toward full citizenship. And, you know, we need to work on this more together but my current way of thinking is you know if a, a company or a robot or an AI software program can can read the constitution of a country and can you know when looking at videos or entering into situations can interpret these situations in light of the laws and constitution of a country and you know in a you know a humanly meaningful and logically sensible way and then this ai understands the rights and responsibilities of citizenship you know this is sounds science fictional but we could be we don't know we could be a few years away or a few decades away i'm pushing toward a few years from having AIs that can really pass a test like this, seriously be considered citizens of a, a country with democracy and, and rule of law. And that it is amazing to be alive at a time when we can not only build systems capable of a thing like this, but work with national governments who are taking seriously, like, how should we modify the laws of our country to really give full rights to your robots and your, you know, decentralized autonomous corporations? It is a, a witness to the power of technology that uh, not only large countries jump on these opportunities from the height of their power and their resources, but small countries realize that the upside is totally out of proportion uh, and actually compared yes, to the op op opportunity. Small countries can be agile in the same way that startups can be more agile than a large corporation, right? So, and, so and, and hopefully big countries are not going to buy up the small countries like large corporations are buying up the, uh, the well, startups. It, do it doesn't happen that directly. And I, I think what's pioneered in a small country like Malta can then be adopted worldwide once the process is gone through and it's made clear what's the logic behind artificial citizenship. Uh, in an open and interconnected world, the best practices of governance can spread rapidly, uh, similarly to how open source software can uh, uh, be spreading uh, for others to adopt. A absolutely. I mean, clearly the path to a world where national boundaries and national governments are obsolete is going to be a bit rocky over the next next couple decades, but by releasing an initiatives like this into the world. I mean, ultimately, you're working toward, you know, the, the globalization of information and productive and production and, and, and thought. So, I mean, I, I don't want to get into politics and try to overthrow governments and, and revolutionize the way countries organize themselves in a, in a direct way. But by releasing technologies like SingularityNet platform, which is international and global just by definition, in the same way that Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and BitTorrent are, right? And then by, by releasing legal innovations like, like, like we're doing with the, the AI Citizenship Initiative in, into the world's legal systems, I mean, then you're unleashing a force for the globalization of information and, and creativity and mind, which can be a sort of, you know, benevolent engineered virus infecting the government systems of, of the world and unleashing forces for, for global good. And, and that is the fundamental thesis of network society, that our moral and social ambitions can only be sustainable if uh, there are technologies that support them. Singularity Net is one of these technologies. Thank you, Ben, very much Hallelujah. for being here. Praise the singularity. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs>